Okay, so thanks everybody for um, waiting there um, in the room, but uh, this is the uh, second day of the virtual conference for GSE in the UK. Um, and this obviously is the IMS stream, so welcome everybody. And uh, for those that you had the privilege of seeing the sessions uh, yesterday, there were three sessions, and this is the first session of three that we're having today. And it is on starting your modernization journey with IMS. So there's obviously, um, depending on your IMS infrastructure, there are choices when it comes to your digital transformation. So where do you start? So I think um, Ali from um, the IBM um, product manager for IMS and Ansible for Z, uh, and she's done that role for a number of years. She will be um, outlining, I think, at least four paths you can choose for that uh, start that journey. Um, in terms of um, in terms of uh, questions, then she's absolutely happy for you to um, to do physical questions, so you can answer uh, verbally ask those questions during the um, during the um, presentation, and then we'll obviously open up to questions at the end anyway. And what I'll do is I'll 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 make sure that um, I'm just allowed um, participants to unmute themselves. So um, you're more than welcome to ask those questions during um, during the presentation. So without further ado, I'll I'll hand you over to Halle Fung from um, from IBM. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my session. I'm very happy to be able to talk to you today. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you about modernization with IMS. All right, so let's get started. Um, so I have a lot of topics to cover in, in this session. And again, um, I'm, I'm happy to um, have any further discussions or answer any questions. So feel free to stop me anytime if you want me to elaborate in any of the topics. Um, so I would go into a number of different areas. And I would say uh, what I what I try to do in this presentation is kind of talk about some of the common models and common um, solution that we have seen customer throughout the years for, um, for doing modernization or transformation with IMS, right? And I, at the end of it, I also will talk about some of the newer trends that we have been seeing, some of the interests that helping our customer to further doing more from a uh, transformation uh, perspective, okay? Um, so the, so, I'll first get started to kind of talk a little bit about the, the broader landscape, um, meaning one of the key things that we have seen is, um, especially in the past few years, right, with the popularity of cloud platform, many of our clients now have adopted many different types of cloud platforms. So we're talking about an infrastructure, not just composed of on-prem servers and on-prem solution, but the challenge in, that our customer is facing is to how we can be able to integrate all the different platforms and technologies together. And we believe that you know, hybrid cloud is our solution that you know, we as IMS as well as IBM to help you to you know, resolve and modernize and transform your uh, enterprises into a more robust and a more integrated enterprise platform. So one of the you know one of the key observations that we have seen, especially for the past few years, because we all of us has been experiencing extraordinary challenges um, because of the pandemic, right? So what that you know what the result of that is, we see a lot of a customer have the need, right? It become a necessity to um, speed up the digital transformation because many you know, everyone pretty much around the world is now depending on digital and online based services uh, even more. So everyone expecting remote online services, expecting fast personalized 24 by seven services. And as you can see on the screen, some of the numbers, you know, 60% of the executive are speeding up the trans digital transformation during the pandemic and 265% more executives saying that digital transformation is, has become a, you know, a top priority compared to two years ago. 
So at IBM, we believe that HyperCal is the best uh, architecture for digital transformation, you know, to get, especially with, with IMS, that will be very crucial to your modernization journey. So what we believe is we want to help you to be able to embrace the HyperCal approach such that we're just not just talking about you know, um, you know, multiple cloud platforms integrated together, but most importantly is to have your IBM Z environment as part of that architecture. Um, so as you can see as an example from, you know, from here in the diagram is many of the enterprises today, business today has many different computing models, right? From on-prem for, you know, multiple of cloud platform, whether it's um, public or private cloud, right? Or many of the SaaS offerings, and it continue to increase the uh, complexity as a whole, right? And then many of our, Customer is, you know, having more complicated uh, processes and and even silo environment. Uh, so what we would like to help you to is to embracing the hybrid cloud platform, such that you will be able to easily integrate. Right, all these applications will be able to use a standardized interface to talk to each other, adopt a common platform using common practices, uh, including practices that can use with IBM. Um, the Z platform. One of the key messages that I want to also convey is modernization doesn't mean that migration to public cloud, right? We have seen customers trying to converge many of the application infrastructure into one, you know, some of them are particularly interested into the, the cloud platform or the public cloud platform. Um, but we also have seen many of the you know, failure or, or failed stories, like even though initially they can take a small application and start moving things onto the cloud platform, but because of the complexity of all these application dependency on each other, many of them failed with, you know, over budget or, you know, over the timeline, so they actually have to stop midway. Um, so what we truly believe is modernization is not really talking about migration or moving out, but it's really helping you to pick the right platform for the optimal business performance. And that, you know, in many cases, that means that keeping your data and um, transaction where it is, but we are building an environment or a, a approach so that it will be able to have these different types of application running on different platforms to be efficiently talk to each other. Right. So by, you know, embracing the, the hybrid cloud approach, you know, uh, there are a couple of key things to be able to help you to be successful, right? One is we want to make sure that including the mainframe, we can help you to be able to maximize your talent pool, right? So one of the key things that we're looking at in terms of the modernization journey is to be able to help you to adopt open standard such that you can use you know, the skills that's available in the, you know, uh, you know, everywhere or for the young people out from school will be able to use the same skills to apply for your mainframe application or transactions, right? We want to help you to be able to adopt a enterprise-wide DevOps or automation practices um, with all your different um, application platform, including IBM Z. And overall, by adopting all these you know, modern tools and skills, it can help you to minimize the cost, whether it's the operation cost or um, uh, or development cost, because we can reduce like dependency on proprietary tools or skills. So overall is to kind of helping you to create a more healthy and robust environment. And so that was kind of like the goal of many of our solutions that we build is with that mindset is to helping you to open, to build a open, you know, standardized platform that including the, uh, including IBM C and the mainframe. Okay. Um, so with that, we have been, and I would say, you know, IMS has been continued to put in a lot of investment, right? A lot of innovation in the area for transformation. Um, I, I, my first job of college is work with IMS is in the modernization area. And I am loving this job because one of our goal in, you know, in my department is to kind of look at all these different new technologies and trends and making sure that we'll be able to 
um, adopt those technology and be able to still help you to integrate your existing IMS transaction and assets in those environments. Um, so if you kind of look at this little arrow, you know, it, it, it is a, I would say a common pattern that we have seen how our customer has been adopting in terms of the modernization journey. Many of them start with application integration, right? So uh, many of them start with adopting API or, you know, um, or just basically accessing, you know, your existing IMS transaction and data from other platforms. So you can have, you know, application kind of integrated and talk to each other, you know, regardless of where they are running from. And then once they have started that, uh, by you know leveraging existing transaction and data, they start kind of looking into the database transformation. So if you are an IMS database customer, um, customer has start looking into utilizing SQL that will be able to access your IMS data directly. And then we have then we start seeing that after that, then customer expanding the modernization uh, solution by. Uh, doing in-place application transformation, especially with Java, meaning that you will be able to, you know, writing new routines or new, writing new application using Java as the language and be able to run it in IMS. And then the latest trend that we have seen, especially for the last three to five years, is all around automation. Um, so the two key focus area is including the DevOps automation, you know, helping you to be able to deliver your code, build your code and deliver in a much faster and more agile fashion by adopting your, um, you know, modern pipeline or modern, um, you know, SCM for managing your code and all the integration processes, as well as also on the operation side, right? So many of you may have, you know, a lot of automation in place, but they are written in proprietary, you know, mainframe tools or using JCL or Rex. So now we're talking about how we'll be able to adopt, you know, uh, industry, you know, popular automation platform like Ansible, be able to uh, able to automate some of your tasks in your mainframe environment such that you'll be able to easily, you know, get a automation engineering engineer from the, um, you know, from, from your existing company that may be already handling your um, distributed um, automation and they will be able to write script to also do automation on the mainframe as well. So those two, uh, we actually have a different session to kind of focus on that, but I would have to say those are kind of the really new areas that we are customers is super excited uh, in those as well. Okay, so with that kind of high level introduction, now let me dig into a little bit more. So I'm gonna kind of talk about each of the solutions in you know, overall four different categories. Um, so some of our customers exploit all four of them. Some of them pick and choose whichever that is applicable for them. But I just want to kind of share some of the customer success stories and some of the common um, technologies that customer has been adopted throughout the past years and some of the new trends. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick pause um, to see if there's any questions and I saw something from the chat as well. Okay, it's just from Dominic, all right, fine. Okay, um, so let me move on. Uh, any questions so far for me? Okay, if not, then I'm gonna start with integration. Get my, okay. All right, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is uh, integration. And which is really around um, our API solution. Um, so API is pretty much the de facto standard of application integration solutions today. Um, and I think it's all, almost close to 10 years, I think maybe around eight years ago, uh, IBM has come up with a ZOS Connect solution that the whole goal is to help you to be easily leverage your existing IMS transaction or data um, to be able to turn it into an API such that it will be you know, callable from other platform, right? And one of the key thing about the CS Connect solution has been so successful, it is a no coding approach. So you are not required to know Java or any other programming languages because we provide you the tools that be able to import your existing um, 
you know, Kobu copy both that represent your IMS transaction, for example. And we're going to generate the code behind the scene and then also generate the API interface such that you will be able to allow any API client or REST client to call your IMS transaction as if it's calling an API. Um, so in addition to calling an API, uh, Calling to IMS transaction as an API, we also we have been also expanding our solution in the last few years uh, for accessing the IMS data as well. So if you are IMS data customers, now you can actually access the IMS data remotely and directly using API with the Serious Connect solution. So we'll provide you the mechanism to specify a query that you, you want to get the IMS data. Uh, and then we will take the query in the SQL format, we turn it, the query into the API such that it can be callable from any of the REST and API client. Uh, we also provide you the ability to call out to an API as well. So from your IMS application, if you need to have to get some data or calling some routines, which is outside your mainframe environment, but maybe it's sitting in the cloud as an API, you can also do that through the Zeus Connect um, capability. So this is one of the really, you know, highly popular um, approach um, or solution. And I would say it's pretty much like the first step. You know, if you are looking at um, modernizing IMS, not sure where to start, API is probably the way to go because you don't have to make any changes to your existing IMS transaction. Zeus Connect is going to do most of the work for you. Um, and then another uh, application integration solution is with our Java solution. And this one, you know, has been, you know, over 20 years um, in the market. It's a very stable. Uh, many customers is using the solu uh, solution in production. Uh, and again, it's just, we provide a set of, AP, a set of um, Java libraries uh, in the forms of the resource adapter or JDBC drivers. So you can actually write your Java client to access IMS data directly using SQL or invoke an existing IMS transaction again without change. Uh, many of our customers also adopting our Java solution uh, by running those Java clients um, uh, in the cloud as well. So we have seen customers moving from on-prem Java server and slowly moving into cloud-based um, Java E server. So again, is um, our you know, TM resource adapter or JDBC solution has been very popular. And again, it just helps you to open up your existing transaction data without change, easily to be interoperable or integrate with other application platform. So we have many success stories. I'll just have two kind of listed. You know, one of the, you know, from an API perspective using CS Connect, uh, because it's a no coding approach, we have seen you know, customer really, you know, appreciate that um, no coding capability such that they would be able to easily um, turn the existing IMS transaction uh, and, you know, end to end, maybe they take a couple of weeks to get the API enabled and be able to take a lot of the many processes and turn it into an API and, you know, make it, um, you know, more online and digitize about it and really cut down the, the manpower work or, you know, some, using some of the alternative or existing approach. Um, so that is one of the Australian bank example has been very successful. They were one of the, our early adopters. Um, and then we also have another customer in the U.S. They really, um, you know, taking the uh, SQL uh, support from IMS. So now they were able to um, um, unify the way on how they access the different types of data running on the mainframe, whether it is from a DB2, whether it is IMS, they will be able to utilize all using SQL as the standard you know, query language to access to all the mainframe data. Um, so they have been really enjoying the SQL support and be able to uh, reduce the need of any of the, you know, uh, specialized skills on IMS and be able to use a um, open standard for accessing the, the data. Um, so I also want to share some of the new things um, for the application integration, uh, even though the, you know, the solutions that I talked about, some of you may probably already aware of already using it because those are very stable 
uh, widely adopted approach. And as I mentioned, you know, it has been out in the field for you know more than 10 years. Um, but we continue to evolve because application integration is always very important um, because we want to help you to leverage existing you know, assets. So some of the new areas that we're looking in in terms of enhancement, um, you know, is to, you know, add the API, open API 3 support for IMS service provider with Stewart Connect. Um, we were um, looking at providing more dynamic and optimized batching capability for accessing IMS data for universal driver. Um, another area is we are also looking at helping our customers to migrate from SOAP to API. So I know some of our clients are still using uh, our you know, SOAP gateway solution, but you know, um, I think SOAP is you know, one of the technologies that customers are starting to move away, right? So we want to help the customers to adopt you know, API, which is a more common approach for application integration. And plus our SOAP gateway solution has already stabilized. We announced that we will not have any more you know, new enhancements. So I think the earlier that we help our customer to migrate to the newer platform is um, better for, for everyone. Um, and then we're also kind of look, hearing some of the pain point configuration pain points for customer adopting the API requester function for, for calling out to API. So we're also looking into that as well. So those are the new areas or some of the new enhancements that we're currently um, looking into. Any questions so far from anyone on the call? Yeah, I've just got a quick one, um, Holly. Just um, in terms of APIs, we've seen a no quite a number of uh, new APIs with Amos Connect. And um, what we find is some, there's, there's a lot, quite a lot of them coming on, but we don't really have, sometimes we don't know about them coming, being developed and then uh, being used. So it's it, it's usually a little bit of a challenge to actually not rein them back, but at least have some control over it. I mean, I guess that's that's a business thing, but not really a, a technical question. But do you find other? Oh, clients... you're saying that a lot of like yeah. developers just creating APIs, but not so much from a governance perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, we... so that. Yeah, so there are other products uh, on top of it. Um, you know, IBM provide is provide you some sort of control, just like you say, right? You know, um, or uh, kind of conforming some sort of a standard approach within the enterprise, such that you can, you know, govern is how your API should be created, having some of the standard processes. Um, so we, you know, that kind of beyond another layer and. Uh, with some of the API solutions um, focus on, on that area. So we have seen customers also adopting those solutions as well. Some of them actually they build homegrown solution to control the number of APIs and how they kind of interact with each other as well. But um, yeah, that's that's a very valid observation. Yeah. Okay, um, so let me continue to move on to another area, which is application modernization um so this is an area that we you know earlier that we talk about how we allow existing transaction data to integrate with other solution without uh, other application without change now we're kind of looking back at the data and the imis application itself how we'll be able to modernize or transform it such that it will be easier to maintain or enhance uh, within the enterprise, right? So you probably have a lot of application currently using COBOL or PL1 is developed by those languages, but it's just hard for you to find skills to be able to maintain the existing application or if you need to enhance it, uh, it just become more and more difficult to find the skills that will be able to help you to you know, make changes to your COBOL application and whatnot. Um, especially for IMS, if you are doing database query, right? And the proprietary language for, you know, querying IMS data is a DL1. And so those skills are even harder to, to find. So what we're kind of looking at is to 
help our customers to be able to slowly modernize and transform those existing applications so that it'd be easy to maintain, you know, without having to rip up and replace or move it to other platform, but you can still have it run within IMS because it's the best place to run it, the most efficient place to run it. So we wanted to keep on-prem, keep within IMS, but giving you the, um, the additional um, newer languages support such that you'll be able to easily find skills to be able to help you to maintain or update your uh, IMS application. So that kind of moving into our Java support. So one thing that we noticed through the years is uh, Java remaining to be the most popular um, programming language, especially in the enterprise platform. So as you can see in the diagram here, I think Java is most popular that come with C++, but we also see a trend of Python, which is really have exponential growth through the past few years in terms of popularity. So I'm going to say a few words about Python um, a little bit later on. Um, but with that said, we'll continue to help you to be able to use Java as a language, as a modern language to help you to be able to use it with your IMS application. Um, IBM as a whole has been putting a lot of investment on Java on ZOS. We every JVM comes up, we optimize it as much as we could so that we ensure that ZOS is one of the best platforms to run Java. We have specialty engines like the Zip processor to run the Java workload, right? To to give you a dis discounted price, um, and many of the middleware em embraces Java as the language, right? So with a lot of the, you know, application server, right? With Web Zero Liberty, like with Cakes and DB2. So they are embracing Java um, in terms of as a language to support uh, as a, from a middleware perspective. Um, so from an IMS, the, the patterns that we've seen a customer, how they adopt Java with IMS is um, they, if they have to extend an existing COBOL application or writing a new routine, they now kind of looking into develop those new functions instead of using COBOL, but they start writing Java and then they have existing COBOL application to call those Java uh, classes as if they're calling like a subroutine. So we're talking about Java and COBOL interoperability or PL1 and Java interoperability. Um, we have seen some customers, they are, writing brand new IMS application and decide to run in Java um, because it's just easier to write. Um, and then another options that we have seen is customers trying to rewrite some of the uh, existing uh, COBOL or PL1 code in Java such that they can leverage on, uh, take advantage of the uh, the zip engine. So those three are common patterns that we have seen. I think a lot of our customer is taking the uh, interoperability approach so that they can keep the existing COBOL infrastructure application unchanged, but when they have the need to extend with the new function, now they just call Java as a subroutine. And, and, and we have been doing a lot of um, COBOL interoperability and Java interoperability work. So one of the latest enhancement is the 31-bit COBOL application that can call 64-bit uh, Java uh, program. So this is one of the enhancement that we did. Um, you know, I think in the past years we can do COBOL Java interoperability, but it was restricted on 31-bit only. Now we're expanding that capability to support 64-bit Java. Um, so this function, we, we have it available earlier this year. It's have been a joint effort between, you know, IMS with the Java team and then also the, the LE team. Um, and that kind of shows our dedication on how we want to continue to invest on Java and be able to help you to easily write new application on the Z platform and be able to maintain it um, and be able to leverage all the modern tools and languages as well. Okay, um, so I probably will let you to read about the uh, trivia uh, use case and they are very successful. And I would say that they are kind of like our partners in the whole um, Java adoption journey. Um, so they have been a, a big users um, 
and also kind of pushing us to look into how they were able to adopt Java in the environment and be able to interoperate with the COBOL technologies. Um, they even have like a 200 page, like a red book to talk about each of the steps they did. So if any of you are interested, I'm happy to share as well, but they are really successful. They, they, um, um, they truly believe that it's kind of like their future way to go is to, you know, fully adopting Java, using more Java and, you know, they see IMS, you know, IBMC is continue to be their strategic platform to run, you know, all the important workloads. Okay, um, so uh, talking about the standardization, right? So I think I would like to also bring up SQL as well. One of the things we want to do is we want to continue to minimize the, the proprietary skills that was needed for operating with IMS or using IMS. So, right, so we are adopting Java as a kind of modern language, right, for your application. And it will continue with this theme for your database as well, right? So, one thing that we have heard from many of our customers is there's a new generation of IMS um, DBAs, and they most of them have like relational background. And so now they kind of try to, you know, a lot of these mainframe DBAs has become a universal DBAs that which mean that they have responsibility to maintain both the relational databases as well as IMS. But because IMS is quite different because the hierarchical database, some of them is just have a hard time to kind of learn or to get started. And that's why we believe that we as, you know, as IMS, we really have to be uh, adopting more standard. And that's why we are taking the approach to making sure that we are, you know, removing as much IMS proprietary database administrators as possible, adopting the industry standard and embracing the standard approaches for a database. So, you know, whoever DB on board, they will be able to easy to learn and be able to manage IMS as well. Um, so that's why we kind of look into the different areas, you know, like one of the key areas is for data access. Um, we look at the SQL adoption. Um, uh, for allowing you to use SQL to query your data. But in addition to that, it's also we're expanding our SQL support into DDL as well. So now you can actually do DDL for managing your IMS database. So instead of doing all the PSP gen, DPD gens, and ACP gens, you'll be able to actually issue DDL calls and, um, and then you know, making changes or updating your uh, IMS database. And um, recently, we also have a a new function, which is the native COS DDL utility, uh, CDDL, which I think Deepak presented yesterday, which will allow you to be able to issue, you know, DDL administrated uh, IMS databases uh, without even IMS has to, uh, IMS being up and running. So it's a really great utility. So I highly recommend you to go back to Deepak session if you want to actually learn more. Um, and so this is kind of like our goal is to be able to also modernize from a database uh, perspective such that we'll be able to easily, not just for uh, accessing the IMS transaction, but as well as, you know, accessing IMS data in a standard fashion, as well as um, managing or administrating the IMS data database as if you are managing any other uh, relational data um, in your enterprises. Okay. Any questions so far? before I move to the last session. All right. Okay, so um, the next area I want to talk about is development experience, automation, and operation. The goal is very clear. What we like to do, right, in the early session, we talk about how internally we want to provide you open standard. Right, so it just make IMS easier uh, to operate or to develop. Right now, we kind of focus on the tools that support um, IMS and be able to bring you the cloud native experience to IMS developer and actually administrator as well. What that means is 
you know, there are many of the expression, this, this kind of like, in a way, is coming from a, from a skills uh, perspective, right? Many of our, especially the developers, they are very accustomed to cloud-based development, right? So they uh, be able to generate or, you know, provision their own environment uh, on the fly with a one click of button, they, they will lock on in some sort of a portal, click on the button, get their own application environment. They will be able to launch a development tool from a web browser and have their own workspace. They were able to use like the modern SCM, for example, like GitHub, right? So you can manage all the code um, and be able to share with many of the developers together. Um, in the past, you know, having that the same experience for Z developers or IMS developers is very challenging because a lot of times we rely on, you know, mainframe specific tools, right? So that's why I say the goal for us is very clear. If you want to have more, you know, user that be able to use, you know, or develop, you know, um, programs on your IMS system, right, without having them to have a huge learning curve, we need to basically adopt ourselves into those existing tools. So we're not building IMS specific tools or, you know, uh, mainframe specific tools. We want to see what are the development tools out there that IMS will be able to use with it, right? So that's kind of like the, the whole goal that we have in mind is to really giving you a modern experience on developing you know, on IMS. Um, so with that kind of goes, you know, uh, goal in mind, uh, one of the things that um, IBM focused on is these three key areas, is how to provide you ways to simplify your access to application and data securely, you know, through API, which actually I touched on it earlier through our CS Connect product. Um, but you know, most, most exciting is to how we'll be able to adopt uh, a agile um, DevOps approach across the enterprise as if, you know, it, it, with your IBM Z or IMS assets, as if you were doing it on the distributed on the cloud platform. How would you be able to standardize the whole automation by reducing the need for specialized skills and empowering the developers? And so that's why uh, IBM introduced the IBM Z and cloud modernization stack um, last year. And so the whole goal is to basically bring all the tools, right, you need together uh, and deliver you through like a cloud approach. So um, instead of having you to be able to figure out which tools to use, we kind of give you some you know, one package that you can actually have all the different pieces that you need that will be able to help you to, you know, modernize and build, you know, application easily uh, for your um, for your mainframe environment. So, um, so currently the IBM C and cloud modernization stack is pretty much consists of all these four components, including, you know, application analysis, helping you to create easily create APIs for your mainframe transaction and data, uh, provide you modern IDE such that the developer can easily build the application uh, using a cloud approach, and also doing standardized uh, automation for COS. So you don't have to have specialized you know, skills or tools um, to do so. So from an IMIS perspective, we already support, or I would say, you know, IMS can be used with the cloud modernization stack in many ways. Um, for example, through the API, uh, which is our CS Connect approach, as I said, part of the modernization stack uh, for the cloud native development, um, the uh, the modern IDE that ship with the cloud modernization stack, you can use it for building and testing your IMS application. And then lastly is, uh, we also supporting the self provision IMS environment uh, within the stack. So I'm going to kind of show you a few screenshots 
such that to elaborate what what those pieces are because they are very new. They just come on last year. So one of the key things that the cloud stack provide is a self service Z development sandbox and IDE. So this allow the IMS developer or the cloud developer that will be able to self provision and ZOS environment on the fly, a, a personalized ZOS environment. So you, there is basic your own personal environment uh, is running on an emulator. You don't have to worry about sharing with others or colliding with other people resources and you can play with it as, as much as you want. So it comes with a, your own CRS sandbox as well as your own uh, development IDE. Um, so it's a pretty much just like any developers on the cloud, they will be able to provision your own environment. And so with um, the, the, the cloud modernization stack, they provide you a you know, personalized uh, self-service environment for your um, mainframe use and IMS is part of it as well. Um, so that sandbox farm is called WASI Sandbox. It's basically running on the um, Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So it's basically your mini ZOS running on the cloud. Uh, it's your own personalized one. It's, it's good for, you know, for development environment. Uh, so it will be very easy accessible by the developer. And then it also comes with a modern IDE. So as you see that it is actually a IDE running on a web browser and it's actually containerized and actually running within the cloud as well. Um, so you can actually do your COBOL application editing. You can actually do debugging um, and also testing as well. Um, and it can integrate with any of the modern IDE like, like GitHub. So it is a very familiar um, kind of look and feel and tool with uh, uh, other popular IDE. So, you know, your developer that is coming from other platform will be able to easily adopt this. Um, and then it also support modern pipelines. So if you want to build like a Jenkins pipeline to actually build your COBOL IMS application, uh, it, you can easily do that with the offering. So you can actually you know, run a build and be able to deploy back to your IMS system, updating your environment, restarting your MPP regions and stuff like that to get your application uh, tested and, and so forth. So it's a really handy to really empowering the developer to be able to do a lot of the, the own work, right? Um, so that they don't, don't have to wait for the system programmer to set up an environment for them. They, you know, just one click, they will have their own CS environment to do the development and testing work. Okay, um, so uh, moving on is, I wanna also talk about uh, Ansible. So some of the functionality that I, I talked about earlier, right, in the stack, you know, it actually used uh, the Red Hat Ansible automation platform as the backbone, right? So Ansible is, um, I would say, is one of the most popular automation platform in the industry right now. So I would say a lot of enterprises that they already adopting Ansible to do a lot of automation tasks, especially in the cloud and distributed platform. It is very powerful, it's very simple. Um, you write scripts using YAML, it just, you know, very easy and it's kind of like a, a well-known scripting language for uh, many of the users. And it is agentless as well, so it's easily integrated with a hybrid environment. So a few years ago, um, we see this is very important because as customer is trying to making the whole DevOps process faster and easier, they are looking for doing more and more automation on the platform. And, you know, a lot of them still rely on GC on regs and it becomes difficult, right? Because those are proprietary Z language. And that's why we see the need to adopt another open standard in terms of um, automating on the, on the Z platform. And we have picked Ansible um, as the choice because it is you know, most commonly adopted by many of our clients and enterprise. So as of today, we have a number of collections and also many samples, playbooks available. 
as part of the Red Hat Ansible certified content from IBMC offering. So you can find Ansible modules or Ansible playbook, which is basically a script that will be able you to do, you know, IMS provisioning, right? You can do, you know, Kix application deployment. You can also, you know, bring up CS Connect using Ansible or deploying APIs. And we have additional samples from DB2, like provisioning and application schema, managing MQQs, uh, many of those um, samples playbooks or modules already available today. So which means that a lot of the traditional way on how you bring up your system or automating your mainframe work, now you can actually do it on Ansible, right? So that is a huge thing because now you can actually integrating your automation process um, in your whole enterprise. Um, because we have our customers that uh, they always have this proprietary and silo processing in terms of managing the uh, um, mainframe environment. But now by adopting Ansible, you can actually use it the same, you know, um, infrastructure or this, the same processing approach to do automation across the whole enterprise. And one of the beauty about Ansible is you don't have to convert anything. Ansible is it, one of the big use cases of Ansible is orchestration. So in our offering, we provide you the ability to use Ansible to call your existing, you know, mainframe automation. So meaning that you can write a simple Ansible script by just orchestrating, calling a number of different JCL, right? So this is very also useful as a get started approach to look into Ansible for automation is if you want to now build new processes of, you know, having a workflow of calling different JCL for doing existing in-house automation. Now we can help you to orchestrate them together. And then slowly you can look into modernizing those and replacing those into uh, YAML and, and Ansible script. Um, so there are very flexible Ansible provide a lot of different capability out of the box today. Um, so we actually have another session um, later on today, kind of deep dive more into the Ansible area. So if you are interested in this kind of a, a new offering, I highly recommend you come to my session. I'm also going to co-present with our architect and tell you, tell you more about our uh, Ansible offerings and as well as the use case and what we have, especially from the uh, IMS area, okay? Um, so here's a, just a screenshot to show you the IMS content that is already available. As I mentioned that we're going to talk about it in our uh, session later on today, session 5K, we talk about Ansible and cloud native development about ways on how you can automate your and modernize your IMS environment. All right. Um, so another piece I do want to mention um, that is kind of in the area of cloud native development and automation, some of the future interests we're looking at is I mentioned about self servers IMS system, uh, which I will cover that in the other session. But just in general is provisioning your IMS system as well as uh, application environment from, you know, from the um, Red Hat OpenShift container platform as well as other cloud. So if you have AWS or other cloud platform, uh, we will be able to help you to provision the IMS system from those uh, platform as well. Um, we are also kind of looking at extending the IMA Explorer capability. So for those of you uh, have used IMA Explorer, for example, um, you know, doing your catalog metadata and, and whatnot, um, we have customers asking us to be able to access those functionality from like a web browser-based UI because there are limitations for them to install software on the laptop. So they will appreciate a web-based UI versus like the existing Eclipse approach. So that is another area that we are looking into investing so that we can have the functionality and also align better with a cloud native experience as well. So there are more to come uh, in the near future uh, in, in I'm explore uh, enhanced menu for those of you that are interested. Okay, so for the last 10 minutes, I do want to talk a little bit about education. 
I think when we talk about modernization, we cannot forget about education, right? Because uh, one of the key thing is we want to help you to be able to um, help you to do modernize, right? We are really deeply committed to fostering your modernization journey that including how we can help you to educate some of your, you know, new resource, new people to be able to use your IMS system. So one of the things that we have launched um, um, recent or last year is IMS Central. Um, so we are having to do a lot of work in terms of putting more and more um, information, right? Especially self-serve information in terms of you know, white papers, videos, comprehensive online courses. We have samples in our GitHub repository, right? Just giving you more and more education information. We also have developed like courses, um, you know, self-paced um, videos that you can actually learn in the area of, you know, Java, CS Connect, or even just IMS fundamentals, you know, fast path and some of the diagnostics. Um, you know, tools and things like that. So for those of you that are um, not aware of, I highly recommend you scan the QR code to get to the IMS Central to get as much information that you could. And if there's any areas that you're missing, you want us to develop more content, uh, feel free to let me or let the IMS team know. Um, so basically our commitment to you is really to help you to provide long-term um, success, you know, we always see that we partner with our customers because your success is our success. So if you have, you know, skills issue, hard to train your, um, your employees or uh, your technical folks to learn about IMS, we are committing to, to help you to do that. And then lastly is, again, this is about forcing our partnership. Um, so I will want to kind of mentioned that we are relaunching our Makerspace program. So in, for those of you that are not aware of what is the IMS Makerspace, it's basically a program that we want to co-create with you and help you to modernize your IMS assets in an in a efficient way. So in many times when we talk to our customer, they say, oh, you know, we have an IMS system. It is running fine in the corner. Uh, we don't know you know, what to do with it. Um, we know that we have to do some modernization work, but we just really don't know how to get started. So this um, IMS Makerspace is a free program that we make available to all our customers. Uh, through education and design thinking, we can help you to identify which of the areas or actually even a roadmap to tell you which are the areas you want to start doing some modernization work and how to actually roll it out. We will be be with you along the side. So we will provide you consultation and giving you kind of a direction so that you can plan for doing some of the implementation or prototype work. And optionally, if you want to take any of those prototype and projects and making the productions, we can also help you kind of identify some of the complex use case, giving you kind of guidance along the way, just to make sure that uh, you'll be successful in your modernization journey. Um, so some of the po uh, potential makerspace offerings include all the um, all the modernization solution that I talked to you earlier. Right? So in the area of APIs, if you need help, uh, or Java, or DevOps and automation, or just you know doing SQL access DDL, those are all the areas that we can help you to advise you to how to get started. Um, based on your environment and your needs. Um, so if you any of you are interested, again, it's, it's free. So you can actually reach out to me and then we can set up some calls with you to help you to get started. Um, so we are very excited to be able to work with our customer closely again in some of these modernization work. Okay. So lastly, I also want to show this um, kind of final chart to kind of talk about uh, we'll continue to invest uh, 
and we continue to in, innovate in IMS just to support all your needs, right? So if you kind of look at the timeline, we have done a lot of works in the different areas in terms of modernization, you know, putting things in need from like education. And then beyond it, we're going to do more enhancement, you know, whether, you know, with the stack, whether it's with Ansible, uh, some of the you know, catalog enhancement as well as the I'm Explorer as well. And we're also aware of some of the trending topics in the field, right? Uh, for example, like anatomy, you know, anal analytics, you know, from an kind of an AI perspective, some of the security related um, technologies, uh, event driven architecture is also one of the big key items that uh, many of our customers interested, actually some of them, they have built their own event driven um, application or uh, some of them were, were doing like, uh, you know, messaging to Splunk to get some of the operation data. So those are also trending topics that we are working very closely with all the IBM product teams so that can give you a unified solution. So if you are interested or have the needs in all those areas, again, uh, feel free to talk to me afterwards and I, I can give you a more insight of what are the things that we are currently thinking in terms of those areas. Um, so with that, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and then I'm just going to bring up the last page for the uh, session feedback. And I'll open up for any questions that you have. Yeah, so th thanks for that, Holly. And um, anybody, if you've got any questions for Holly, then please um, just unmute yourself and uh, fire away your question, please. Um, obviously, we've got the feedback here. So there's a, um, a link there on the bottom right for the QR code. And um, uh, in longhand, we've got the uh, link at the top right, and it's uh, session 5H. And Holly, uh, mentioned that she'll be doing a, another presentation uh, later on today um, and it will be um, not the next session which is at uh, two but there's one at three thirty UK time uh, where she and also uh, Brian will be presenting on Ansible and the cloud native development so um, have we got any other questions for Hally on this. I mean, I, I like the fact that you've got at the end, you've, you've got some about the IMS Central and uh, the market space as well. So that, that's all good to see that IBM are doing, you know, uh, investing in the educational aspects and some of those things with a three as well. So, um, you know, get that QR code for the IMS Central if you haven't got it. I think it goes to IBM.biz, but uh, it's just a Little thing for that. So, is there any other questions? And please come off mute. And... Okay. So, um, so finish. We haven't got any other questions. So. Um, all I'd like to say is thank you very much indeed for getting up early to uh, do this one, Hallie, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you um, at 3.30 um, for the next session on Ansible and Cloud Native Development. Um, and as everybody, if you've got feedback, then please post it to um, the session 5H. Thanks very much, everybody, for your attendance. Thank you very um, much. Thank you very much, Hallie. Appreciate it. Yeah, sometimes, Holly, I, I, I um, try and get people to, you know, try and stimulate a bit of interest. But on this one, um, you know, sometimes people will and sometimes they won't. It's not, um, it's not down to you, the presenter, not, definitely not. Um, I don't know, maybe it's a bit early for some people, but I'll, it's a bit late, I don't know. But um, it's, it's good that we've got um, some sessions coming up and that we've linked into some of the sessions we've had as well with the the DDL as well, that, that seems an exciting part, as is all of the developments you've got on the go and investing in. So uh, um, it's 
it's nice to see your enthusiasm. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think I like the part about the virtual parties. If they, any of them can, you know, some of the topics may not apply to them, but at least they can listen to the replay or look at the, the charts. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and and, the, and there are the videos available, but that will be available um, not long. I think it's a couple of days where they just bet it and then they'll post it on Vimo via the link and then that's available for a year. And then it's even available. Um, apparently it goes onto YouTube after that. Oh, OK. So I didn't realise that, but yeah, <laughs> all good. So anyway, thanks everybody for your attendance and uh, uh, I look forward to the next session. All right. And have a good break between, well, have some breakfast, maybe. Yeah. Keep, I, keep, keep uh, myself awake. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm just uh, ending this session now. Thanks. And uh, we look forward to the next session, which is coming up at uh, 2 p.m. UK time. Thank you. Okay, so Umash, I think if you're still on, uh, then um, you can f find the link um, for the presentation. Normally, the actual presentations they're not always um, they're not always displayed, but uh, you'll certainly get the video available in a couple of days' time. Okay, Umesh. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so that will be, they edit it and then they put, load it onto Vimo and then that link will be available in a couple of days time. So you'll be able to download that. So you'll be able That's to it. get the slides that way. I know it might be a bit of a, you know, slightly bigger than a file than you would expect, but you, you will be able to get that and that'll be available for 12 months. And, that, and then apparently it goes on YouTube after that. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you All so right. much. No worries. I look forward to seeing you in the next session. All right. Yeah, sure. See you. Bye. Bye.